Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to look into Windows 25 release features. Before we get started, I wanted to talk about release updates. You can find this from your setup and go to release updates. I think we get so busy in our day to day project that it might seem like a low priority item, but highly recommend checking out your release updates, especially the things that need action. It doesn't mean that you have to look at every single thing here, but things that you're using and especially the things that are going to be enforced by Salesforce, highly recommend looking at it because there might be scenarios where you might have unforeseen issues and you want to be ready for it. You want to test it in sandbox and make sure that anything that is being enforced does not impact your org. And Salesforce does also send you reminder emails. Uh, there was an example where um, we have to verify email addresses before you can send automated email from Salesforce. And that enforcement came and many of people's uh, processes broke and they stopped getting email. So those are the things you want to pay attention to and actually get ahead of so that when they happen, you are prepared for it. With that out of the way, let's look at some release features. The first feature I want to talk about, which I am very excited about is around troubleshooting user permission. It might seem like a really small thing, but when you're troubleshooting, and even looking at some issues or production issues, it's so easy to now go to your user option. And don't worry about this page. I'm just seeing this because probably it's in release and I'm sure that will be fixed by itself. You can go to view summary on user and you can see in one page all the different access that your users have. If you're trying to troubleshoot your users and see what access they should or should not have, you can come to the user page and look at all of these object permissions, field permissions even. So this tells you read, write, all the crud, view all, modify all even. So really good way to look at your users and see if they have especially the modify all and view all permissions. Field permissions, you can filter that by object here. So if you wanted to, let's say, take a look at a product, you can see that right here, all the fields with their access. You can also look at public group membership, queue membership. So I really like that it's all in one place. So going to save you a lot of time. Just around that um, access pager, you can now also go to your object manager and look at the object access. With the introduction of uh, permission sets and permission set groups, it becomes really cumbersome to be able to look at one page where you can see who else has access to this object in one view. So it's really useful to be able to just come here and see, oh, what all profiles have access to this object? What permission sets get access to this object? Rather than having to dig into each, every single permission sets and profiles. So it's a nice place to come in and quickly look at it at one time. Similarly, um, you can also look at all the public group access as well. So we're going to go to public groups and I'm going to get this screen again. Uh, we're just going to ignore that. But it, once you go to your actual group, and similar to user, you also have this view summary on a public group. And here you can see how is this public group used to grant access. We create public groups for so many reasons. You can have it for sharing rules, reports and dashboard folder access, list views and other public groups as well. It's so easy to just come in one place and being able to see where am I using this public group rather than having to dig around your entire org to figure out where they're used. If I wanted to see which list views are shared with this public group, I'm pretty sure I'm going to use this feature quite a lot. While we're at the public group page, we now have option to add description. I can't believe it was already not there, but in case if you have accumulated multiple public groups over the years and you have no idea what they do, it's probably time to go back to those public groups and add the description so your later admins or whoever is using the system is able to quickly tell what public group is used for which purposes. All right, moving on, uh, let's look at quickly user list. So user list also has some enhancement. You can go to your user management settings and you can enable enhanced user view. So enhanced user list view. This will allow you to have users list view just like other list views. So you have this list view and you can also have it inline editable. I'm not able to get that really show up in my org, but if you do, let me know. I think I'm following the right steps, but this could also be just because I have this org that is not fully uh, updated yet. Moving on. Now let's take a look at some lightning page updates. I'm here on my account page. And this is my compact layout. So this layout is controlled by compact layout, as you may already know, similar to how the details are controlled by page layouts. And if you have not started updating your lightning pages to dynamic page, 
I think now is the time because Salesforce is adding more and more functionality around the dynamic pages. One of them is now you can have dynamic highlights panel. So compact layouts sometimes are limited. They have fill limitations. You can't add certain fields types here, but now you can use dynamic highlights panel to just drag and drop and then add your fields. Similar to, I'm just gonna add site, active. You can directly add it from here, all of the fields that you like. I believe it is limited to 12 fields, but you don't really want to add too many fields on the highlights panel because that defeats the purpose of highlights. You can also add rich text, which is awesome. So you can add different types of fields here. And now to really make it dynamic highlights panel, you can also add actions. So for example, if I wanted to just add edit action here, I'll do that. And I can also add maybe a delete action. Any action that you have available on your page can be easily available here. All the custom buttons, object specific, global specific and productivity actions can be added right from here. And you can also set uh, filtering just like any uh, dynamic components, you can add filters. This is what it looks like. Obviously my fields are empty and this is too long. So it's kind of taking a lot of view, but I can imagine that if you have columns that are longer, you may want to be careful on how many fields you add here and don't add something that might take up the entire space because this is dynamic and this will expand. So keep that in mind before you start using this. Another feature I read about, which is not yet enabled in my org, because I believe it's on a rolling basis, is something about conditional field formatting. So you'll be able to go to your object manager and actually set up a field formatting option. So imagine that you're on a page and you want it to highlight the actual field based on certain values. So maybe for rating hot, I want to appear, make it appear as like red or fire or something like that. I'll be able to do that. I have not played around with that, but once I get access to that, I'll definitely be sharing a video on that. Moving on to the next section and let's check out some flow enhancements with Windows 25. There are some general enhancements from maintenance perspective. So there are flow auto saves, which we all have lost some work at some point because of not saving the flows, which is awesome that we're going to have auto save now. And when you're trying to save a flow and if there are errors, you can still save it, which is already currently there. But now there will be more clear errors and be very specific about where the errors are. So as you can see, I, I tried to save these without giving it name or anything like that or variable. It is telling me these are the errors and it also tells me where exactly they are, which is awesome. So if you have a giant flow, for example, it's hard to find those things. So. It's giving me exactly where I should look at and warnings will also appear here. And then you can also see that there are tips. So here I'm trying to put a create record inside a for loop, which is a big no. You definitely want to avoid it if possible because it might cause issues and you might run into 101 errors. So here I'm trying to do that and it's giving me an error saying not error, but a tip saying that, you know, a loop element path contains get record and create record. You shouldn't add this because you might run into some issues. So that's pretty awesome that it is warning you as the admins to look at the tips. Don't just ignore it, read it and make sure you're taking actions on them. Other couple of features are around the action in the flow screen. So with the last release, there was this, you are now able to add actions within a screen flow. A good example is, for example, you needed to have accounts and then you want people to click a button to get all the contacts and then show them in a data table. You can do all of that in a single screen. Previously, you would have to have two different screens and then add the get record action in between to be able to do that. But now you can just have an action and use any of your get records or any of the actions. You can use it right here within the screen flow. So that is now GA. It was already in beta with the last release, but now it's GA with some additional enhancement. So definitely check it out. I'm very interested to know how you're using actions in your screen. So let me know if you have any questions around that as well. Another feature around screen flow is you can now have multiple choice lookup. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You can use your choice lookup. Make it so that let users select multiple options and you can just add your choices right here. I'm just going to say planning. So those are the three options that I can allow. Previously, this was not possible. You'd have to use a choice lookup with a record or you'd have to use like multiple check boxes here or multi select save that real quick for this and I can now just have planning invite so this is a really good use case for let's say you wanted to have multiple choices here and maybe you are doing something with this record in the back and you might create other records from this or um, really depends on your use case but I really like this UI being able to select 
directly from here instead of having to put check boxes or a drop down because sometimes you might have a ton of option and it's not a great user experience when you have to put a long drop down for that this is a really good use case especially if you have like over 10 selections to choose from this was a really good ad i can definitely see a lot of use cases around this already there are definitely some other interesting features around flow transform data for example now have additional data types like text number currency that you can use previously you could only use record type which was somewhat limiting uh, let me know if you, this is something you're interested in and i can make a detailed video there are also other einstein related features which does not come with all the orgs but if you have einstein um, they are adding more supports around being able to use gpt to create formula in flow i am going to try that out with a different org and we'll let you know how that works out but uh, in the meantime, please check out the release notes if you want to look into more specific features. And if you have any questions around a specific feature, please let me know as well. And what is your favorite feature with Windows 25? Thank you so much for watching.